Hello, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to another YouTube video. And in this video and the next couple or few, I want to be going through some uh, some video walkthroughs and guides for the Linux Offsec Club. And it's an online war game that you can find at linux.offsec.club. And uh, you can see here it gives us uh, some credentials, a username and a host name, a uh, password for us to log into, and the directions are SSH into this user with that password, use the home directory of that user to find the next password, etc., and user15 is the last user. So I am going to go through um, video guides for every single one of these levels, all of these users, and... Um, I'll release them kind of steadily, it's just kind of like three at a time, just three of those, um, hopefully stretched out to like five videos. And a note here, okay, this is created and maintained by the Offensive Security Club at Dakota State University. So shout out to you guys, you're awesome, thanks for creating this thing. Um, I don't know if I already did have this folder created, okay, it looks like I did, whatever. Um, let's jump in, let's make a directory so we can work in this. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this password, put it in a user1.txt file so we can keep track of them. And then let's just start. Let's SSH into this account, user1 at linux.offsec.club. And I'll paste with control shift V that password. And I forgot the space was in there in the clipboard. Okay, cool. So here we are. We are, I totally jumped over this message of the day, but it's not important. Um, if I were ls, there's nothing in this directory, but I am in the home directory. So ls in that there's nothing in this directory, but only not including hidden files. If I ls tag a to denote all these hidden files, we get something else here. In fact, we get a hidden directory called dot here. That looks kind of different than what we're used to. Normally, we're used to seeing a bash history, bash logout, bash rc profile and SSH folder, but we don't normally see a dot here. So let's check out that. I can tell it's a directory because it's blue for ls colors. You could probably run ls tack l if you need to see that more strictly, but I'm sure you're used to this stuff. ls, there's our pass file. Okay, cool. So this is the password for user2. Um, let's just note that in a, another file. Cool. Close out of that one. And now we can ssh into user2. Let's copy paste that password. Sweet, we're logged in. And there's this file <laughs> called dollar sign exclamation point backslash password and ampersand. And yeah, okay, that's that's totally the file. But can I actually cat that file? No, I can't. It makes my shell go crazy and weird. Okay, whatever. Not to fret, we can use a wildcard here, right? We can just cat star, and we get the file. Okay, so that wild card, that star, that asterisk is just treating every character um, and interpreting it, okay, as encompassing as many characters as it can. So it's reevaluating to this this file name and is able to actually display it to the screen a-okay. So, okay, there's our, there's our password for the next one. Let's jot that down in user3.txt. Cool break out of this guy and SSH to user three, paste that password in and we're moving. Okay. Um, password is just in this directory. Oh, okay. Different thing here, right? This isn't a regular password. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is an SSH private key that we can use to actually connect to, I'm assuming the next user, user four, right? Um, you can kind of identify these by this by default MII base64 string that kind of knows, okay, this is the credentials um, that you typically see in an RSA private key. And when you're making SSH connections, sorry, SSH connections, you can have an RSA private key act as your password or act as your credential to actually log in and authenticate to. So let's just copy this and I'll break out of here, put this in user4.txt. I'll copy this in and remove all the new lines. Whoops. Okay, good. There is no new line there. Whatever. So now, rather than SSHing and expecting a password, we can use TAC I to specify that uh, private key file, and it's called user4.txt. Okay. 
is giving us a warning. Hey, it's an unprotected private key file. Um, the permissions 0664 for that file are too open. You don't want your private key to be accessible by others. You'll see this pretty much all the time when you want to try and SSH with a private key. It needs to be um, not accessible by others, only you. So let's control C to break out of that. LS tech L. Oh, sorry. I'm not in my user, uh, my, my Linux offset group. My bad. Oh, I don't have user. I don't have user one in here. Let's put him here. Okay, cool. Sweet. All right, LS tech L. And now user four. You can see the permissions on here are read write by me, read write by group, and read by everyone. So let's change these up with chmod. Uh, modify the permissions, and I'm going to use 600, as in I can read and write, group cannot do anything, and everyone cannot do anything uh, on user4.txt. Now lsql, okay, cool. I can read and write, no one else can do anything else. That should be the appropriate permissions to use that ssh command. Let's try it. ssh tag I, user4, blah, blah, blah. Cool, and we're logged in. All right, awesome. Um, let's tackle... Uh, levels and users four through six in a next video but i don't want to make this one too long thank you guys for watching hope you enjoyed these uh and hope this will be a quick and easy good series for you guys to kind of munch on <laughs> all right see you later